Our friend and former Bears head coach Dave Wanstead is here to join us on Football Night in Chicago. Always nice to see you, Coach. Absolutely good to be here. Uh, let's start with something bad. That's always usually how we start a lot of the Bears talk. The Bears were the last in the league in sacks with 20 last year. We all know that they need a pass rusher. So is there still time for them to get one when they have over $32 million left under the cap? That's according to overthecap.com. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I mean, you, you, there's money. Number one, you got to have money. And I think what the Bears are going to do, you know, when I was up there uh, talking with Coach Eberflus and Ryan Poles, I, I think they really owe it to their team and owe it to the players that they drafted and signed already to really evaluate these guys during training camp and during the preseason. And it's very difficult to uh, – you can go out there and evaluate a defensive back or, or a wide receiver without pads on, but the linemen have to have pads on to really make a, a clear and, and honest uh, evaluation. So I think they're going to go through training camp, and then at the end of training camp, if they feel that they still need that pass rusher, now they're going to go look at the veteran guys out there. And what happens, all these veteran guys that are still out there, you know, they're all thinking, well, I'm going to get a two- or three-year contract. Well, what the, what the Bears will do, they'll wait till the end, and if there's a guy they want, they'll say, hey, how'd you like to come in with us on a one-year deal, which helps the Bears, it, it motivates the player, and play for us for one year, and if you play good, who knows what the future will bring. I mean, when I was at Dallas, we did the same thing. We ended training camp, and we were sitting there talking, and you know, I basically said, hey, we need a pass rusher. We have a good young defense, but we don't have a pass rusher. By the end of the week, Jimmy Johnson made the trade for Charles Haley. We signed Charles on a Tuesday before our opener, before the opening game, and Charles played in pass rush situations that Sunday, three days later, four days later. So, uh, you know, the, for, for a pass rusher, it doesn't need a lot of practice if you can get the right guy. Yeah, Charles Haley, though, one of the best in the league at the time when it came to his skill set and really also in-game knowledge. When it comes to this situation, though, for the Bears, let's rewind back to before we knew what we knew about Jalen Carter's involvement in that accident on the university of, at the University of Georgia. Right. And at the time, everything centered around the need for the Bears to get a three technique and everything centered around the Bears for the need to have some sort of pass rush. I'm happy they have drafted who they've drafted in Darnell Wright, but I don't feel that that need went away entirely. No, it, it didn't. It didn't, and and I think they would be the first ones to tell you that uh, uh, that there wasn't the guy that they were uh, excited about when you know when they were picking, and and so they took Darnell Wright. Uh, I think it was a good pick. Uh, they're aware of that. They did take a defensive tackle in the second round. They took a defensive tackle in the third round. Uh, we signed right now. There's probably going to be two. Billings is going to start probably. There's, there's going to be two, possibly three, free agent defensive linemen starting new guys from a year ago. So there's a lot of new people in there between draft picks and free agents. And like I said in the opening, I think right now that, hey, they're, they're being optimistic. Let's see if these guys can come on. And there might be a surprise in there somewhere. And I think that they will spend that money. It's just a matter of figuring out how to spend it. I know you have to have, what, $5 million extra to work with when you think about injury possibilities, but that the likelihood of them spending it is high. Yeah, and they're, they're going to extend some co contracts. I would be shocked if, if Cole Komet doesn't get a contract extension. You know, I mean, there, and there's other guys right now that they're looking close at. I mean, I know they're excited about, you know, Braxton Jones, the big tackle. You know, if some of these guys have pretty decent years and maybe even good training camps, we could see two or three of these young players that the Bears see being the future get contract extensions. Very interesting nuggets there. So you were at training, or you were at minicamp, rather. Right. I'm already going ahead of training camp. You were at minicamp. What did you observe? Well, the, the, the competitiveness, obviously, is there. The two things that jumped at me, I thought the offensive line, you know, with Braxton Jones and, and moving Cody White here back to center, and, and I'll tell you, Tevon Jenkins, I was impressed with this guy. I mean, they've got an offensive line right now. And then you, we talked about uh, Darnell Wright, and, and then they signed Nate Davis. I mean, their whole offensive line, other than Cody White here, is pretty much new or young, and there's a lot of talent there. And as I was walking from group to group, that jumped at me. And the other thing that jumped at me, I saw Darnell, I saw DJ Moore make three catches. 
Layla, three catches that I ain't seen a Bears receiver make in the last three years. I'm talking about laying out, catching the football when guys were covering them and guarding them. And, boy, you could just see, was he excited? Sure. Was everybody else excited? Yeah. But the biggest smile on the whole football field was Justin Fields. When you got a receiver that can make plays, when you can throw it into traffic and you can count on him doing that, that's a big, big confidence builder mentally for your quarterback. And let's expand on that because we've talked a lot about that connection needing to be good in order for the Bears to have a lot of progress. But Justin Fields, with the pass plays over at least 20 yards last season, he yeah. had 32 of those. That was good for 20th in the league. And I know you've been marinating on the dilemma it puts a team in when it comes to consistency of scoring offense. You have to have a big play like that in order to have a chance to win a game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you just you summed it up very well from the stamp you know it's very difficult in the national football league it's tough in college it's tough in high school to move the ball 80 yards you know 70 yards without having a big play you know there's going to be a penalty or there might be a sack or a tackle for loss or something to kill the drive is what usually happens so you got to come up with that big chunk and you and you know we, we you said they had 32 they were 20th that's in the bottom half of the league in my opinion, if you're going to be a playoff team, you need to get those passing big plays in the top half of the NFL. Absolutely. Now, the Bears did release those training camp dates on Friday. They are worth another look, so let's take one. They begin training camp with the team reporting on July 25th. That's a little over two months away. First practice, July 26th. If you want to watch, there's nine practices open to the public, and we show you how you can get tickets and win. That is starting July 6th at 10 a.m. They get individualized plans. They all walked away from mini camp with an individual plan, Coach. So let's start with a guy like Justin Fields. He's got two months. What is an example of what you would give him in that two months' time to be ready for training camp? Well, the, the first thing, you don't want him coming in with a tired arm. You know, and a lot of times, you know, coaches and players, we're, we, we live our lives on itineraries. We're very regimented, you know, re regimented as far as, uh, you know, schedule. What time am I supposed to be in a meeting? What time am I supposed to eat? What time does practice start? What time is the bus leaving? When's the play? You know, that's kind of how we live our lives. And when they get away like this uh, and they go back to their hometowns, they get a little bit of free time, all of a sudden they're on their own. This can be a dangerous time. One, it used to scare me that guys would get off track and get into some problems. So that always concerns a coach. Uh, you know, he gets back home with his college buddies or his high school buddies, and he's got money in his pocket. I mean, you, you don't, I don't want to think about it. Rookies, I'm assuming. Oh, my. Yeah. Rookies, and, yes, yes. Rookies, veteran. Hey, but, but from a football standpoint, you got to make sure uh, that, that some of the guys need to be working and some need to make sure they're smart about it. And we talk about Justin Fields. You know, I don't know where he's at or how much Luke Getze or Andrew Janoko, the quarterback coach, you know, how many throws they want him. But the worst thing that can happen is Justin show up July 25th, and all of a sudden he starts throwing, you know, two practices a day. And he says, boy, my arm's tired. Mm -hmm. You know, well, what were you doing in the offseason? Well, I was, I was working hard. I was throwing to my high school buddies. I went back to Ohio State. I was working with them. Why did you do that? So when they talk about schedule for players, uh, that's kind of what they're talking about. You know, how much you're going to be doing, where you're going to be doing it. And nowadays, I mean, the supervision of these guys, wherever a player's working out, trust me, the Bears are going to know where Justin Fields is. If he says he's working out, they're going to be able to, to keep a close watch and make sure they're monitored. So everybody's smart about it. He posts a lot of stuff on Instagram, too. So there we I feel go. Like we'll probably see that as That's well. That's exactly right. They will. Trust me. They got somebody following all that stuff. <laughs> Stay out of trouble. Don't get dead arm. And my prescription is if you have time to enjoy yourself a little, dance a little, whatever you need. I'd say do it. They, this, if, if they don't do it in the next four weeks, it's not happening until <laughs> hopefully February. Enjoy your summer, Bears coach Dave Wanstead. We hope you've enjoyed yours. We always appreciate the time. Thank you.